I feel like most people would say that they know their house pretty well, like there shouldn't be anything that surprises you, but today I got sent to story time about a guy who just moved into a new house and found a secret room that nobody was aware of. Really out here on some like Netflix docu-series, this is how it starts. It all started when we found the room, then the haunting began. I just thought it was a crazy story time you guys would enjoy, not every day someone finds a secret room in their house, so uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go. All right, what's going on guys? It's your boy Scrubby here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. Here is the comment of the day from the last video. Big thank you to everyone that left a comment. And uh, as I said in the intro, it's a pretty crazy story time today about a guy who found a secret room in his house. If you're hyped for it, do me a favor and smash the like button. And without further ado, let's get into the story time. All right, so the person who sent this in to me just recently ended up having money to buy their first house and they're pretty handy handy like they work in a job where they are redoing houses pretty often so they decided to get themselves a little bit of a fixer upper just because why not if you have all the skills to do it and you can make more money off doing the work yourself and in like improving the value of your house just do it and it was a really old house I'm talking built in the 1800s it had all these rooms and it was pretty big he had gotten a good deal because most people looked at it and were like nah that's too much work and so the downstairs had been kind of redone like the kitchen was fine the downstairs Downstairs bathroom was fine, but the entire upstairs probably hadn't been touched in the last century. You know, it might have been redone once like 20 years after the thing was built, but it was probably built in like 1884 or whatever. It was just a really old house. And so his room in particular was like the master, but it didn't have a bathroom off of it or anything because houses in that age didn't do that. So it was just like a really big room and it had a really big closet, which was also a little bit weird to him for the time period, but whatever. He didn't question it and for the first few months he was there he didn't really like explore the upstairs too much because he was trying to get the downstairs all finished up his thought was he would work his way up like working on the house so after a few months of redoing everything he had decided to start moving upstairs and work on his room first and he had found some weird stuff while he was working on the downstairs you know like little uh, little like almost looked like ways for people to pass notes through walls and stuff like there would be a little latch and you would open the the latch and there would be like a little tube to another room and he wasn't really sure what it was for he figured maybe there was something back in the day they used to write letters or whatever and so he starts with his room and eventually gets to his closet and so he empties everything out of the closet and when he had first moved in he wasn't really paying attention but as he pulls all of the like closet items out he can see the wall a lot better and it looks like there's a seam in the closet that looks like the outline of a door. And if you have a really old house and you find something that looks like a hidden door, you'd probably think, wow, that's a hidden door. And that's pretty sweet. At least I would think it's exciting. But his mind immediately went to like, what if someone's living in this crawl space and being a squatter? Which, yes, is probably the safer way to look at it. It's an old house. You don't know who might be using this secret room. I would immediately be like, there's treasure in there, which is probably why I would be the the first person killed in a horror movie so he decides that he's going to open it either way just to see what's there so he nervously goes over and like tries to pull it open and it's stuck it doesn't open very easily and so he starts looking around and he remembers he has a crowbar and so he gets his crowbar in there and he starts to pry it open and sure enough it's like the hinges have just haven't been used in a very long time so they were kind of stuck but it starts inching open and once it's pried open a few inches he decides to get a flashlight and shine it in there and be like is this just some attic crawl space? Is this actually something cool? Let me get an idea of what I'm looking at. And he shines it through and he really can't see anything because it looks like there's a coat or just a fabric or something in the way. And when he goes to move it, there's like more coats behind it. So he doesn't know if he just found more closet or whatever, but at that point, he's not about to just like crawl through this random spot through all these coats and maybe end up getting yeeted on by whatever's hiding in his attic or whoever is hiding in his attic. I've already made two many videos on news stories before where people have like found someone living in their attic I'd be a little freaked out too once I thought about it but his brother lived just down the road so he decides to call him and let him know and he tells his brother that he found a secret room and his brother is like I'll be right over I want to see it too and so his brother's over there about 15 minutes later and they go back up into this closet and sure enough it hasn't moved it's not like anyone's come out 
and so they pry it open even more to the point where they can both get in and almost like a reverse lion the witch in the wardrobe they start trying to push past the coats into whatever's on the other side and uh what they come out on the other side of is sweet like genuinely something you would really want to have found in your house so it was the space above the garage and so when he had bought the house the inspector was like it looks like it's just attic space i can't really find a way into it so it's not a big deal and it was a pretty high ceilinged like area above the garage so it sucked that he wasn't going to be able to get access to it but it looked like this was how you got access to it and when you came through the other side it wasn't just an empty room with nothing going on no the dude had basically stumbled upon what looked like a speakeasy from way back in the day because it was a whole bar like literally seating all set up no incredible lighting or electric or anything like it was clearly done in a time where they were trying to keep it low key but he managed to just find this bar in this secret room that was above his attic and so he starts looking around and sure enough it was like a coat rack or something that was over the way back through the closet and there was not a ton of coats probably like three or four of them he didn't really know how old they were they didn't look in the best shape it's not like sitting in a uninsulated garage attic is the most fantastic thing for clothing for like 60 70 years but whatever they start looking around and like yeah there's bottles of just unlabeled stuff behind the bar they didn't drink it obviously who knows what it was but he's like dude I just found a secret room in my house and so they spent the rest of that day trying to like pry that thing all the way open so he ends up calling over one of his friends who's a house inspector and he's like yeah dude you just found a 500 square foot bar above your garage with a super cool history and no one really knows how old it is he's not an expert he's not like one of the dudes on Pawn Stars that can just look at a piece of wood oh that's a 115 year old cedar no but I as a, an absolute moron would guess prohibition because why else would you build a secret bar that no one could know about but who knows maybe they were getting a uh, turnt in 1899 for their house party maybe that was what was up they took out their wooden teeth and drank whiskey in the attic so that's a good situation about finding something in the attic but I wanted to do a new type of thing I found a news article about this guy who found a woman living in his attic that was terrifying and it's kind of like a story time so I figured I would do that too so uh, we're testing it out I'll put a link to the article in the description down below this man found a strange woman living in his attic and he's not the only one why is this catching on now bro like why is this becoming a tiktok trend where everyone's just trying to find the sickest attic to crawl into and stay in for a little bit i understand they might are definitely are going through a hard time if they're trying to like hide in attics but still imagine the awkwardness that's going to happen when the other person finds you because it's going to happen you think you're really just gonna live in someone's attic forever and they're never gonna notice there's never gonna be a time when you fall or something oh what was that that sounded like a very human sized thing falling in my attic it's probably nothing that's a completely normal sound to hear when Davis Wallman heard something strange in his attic he decided to investigate he had been house sitting for the summer and for the most part everything had gone smoothly that changed when he returned to the home after a weekend at his family's cabin I got back Sunday night Wallman tells Erbo and a buddy was with me and I remember that we watched Game of Thrones and he left that night and nothing seemed off or amiss but the next night Wallman came home from work at around 11 p.m. and immediately noticed something unusual it was weird the upstairs light in my parents room was on I thought this is odd but my parents were in and out of the house all the time what's scary is as much as I want to be able to be like ah this wouldn't happen to me clearly this was preventable I don't know if I was at work all day and I came back at 11 p.m. and there was just a random light on upstairs I don't know that my mind would immediately jump to a crazy person living in my attic either like ah that's weird maybe my parents were in and out of course your brain's gonna just naturally choose the most logical thing and up until this point after this video today I'll probably assume it's someone living in the attic but until I realized how common this actually is it's not like my brain would have defaulted there either and that's what's terrifying is the fact that he probably spent a few nights sleeping in the same house as the person that had just broken in and was like squatting there too oh man Man, if only I would have known that that light meant that a crazy person was living in the attic. This is how horror movies start. It was weird. I came home one night and something was unusual. I heard some noises in the attic but didn't think too much of it. Boom. That's when they hit you with the jump scare. Guy in like the bunny mask or whatever cute animal they're going to turn into the scary version of. Why do 
horror movies do that, bro. I just feel like they always put the crazy killer in like an animal mask or, or I don't know, an inconspicuous mask that isn't supposed to be frightening. Like what in the Animorph is going on, dude? He's got a squirrel mask on. I'm supposed to be scared of a man in a squirrel mask? He didn't think much of it. His parents had probably stopped in and left the light on by accident. They leave the blinds closed in the summer, and if they stopped in, even during the day, it totally made sense they'd leave the light on, and that was the only thing that was weird. Nothing else was out of place, nothing else would have tipped me off that there was someone else in the house. He went to sleep, and as far as he was concerned, it was a normal night. And early on Tuesday morning, he awoke to strange noises. If you think you're home alone, that is the most terrifying sentence, you awake to strange noises, because that could mean anything. Like, that's just vague enough to be scary. What is a strange noise? Does it sound like a pigeon trying to play a trombone that is technically a strange noise you wouldn't know what that's supposed to sound like but I feel like in this context it's probably someone in the attic on the bright side if you have a crazy person in your house it's probably better to wake up to the strange sound of them in the attic away from you rather than like the sound of them breathing while watching you sleep two inches away from your face because who knows if the person's willing to just be living in a house nonchalantly with other people living there they're probably crazy enough to be watching you sleep too I'm not a gambling man. I don't want to put money on that because I've never tried to hide in someone's house. I'm not sure of the psychology, but I feel like, you know, if you do find someone living in your house, you could assume that there's probably something going on that makes them think that's okay. So all in all, still lucky that you woke up to them in the attic because they could have just been sitting in the corner of the room watching you. Wake up to a stranger trying to like cut a lock of your hair off saying something about how they're going to take you to the CIA facility for cloning. I heard someone up above me, Wallman says, in my my first thought was that my mom must have come home early and was doing something in the attic. My mom keeps a very clean attic, let me tell ya. Still, he didn't understand why his mother would be there early in the morning, especially during the summer when she was frequently out of town. He decided to investigate, but when he tried to open the office door that leads to the attic, he discovered that it was locked. When I tried to open the door and it was locked from the inside, that's when I knew something was really weird, cause my mom would never lock the door to the office. Dude, I just feel like the person who was trying to live in your house must have not realized that you were home either. They're like making all this noise, bro, rearranging their space, trying to get the uh, feng shui up in their attic apartment that they've just acquired by breaking in, locking the doors. Like there's no way that you would do this stuff if you realize somebody was home. Not that you should be in someone's house when they're home and they don't know anyways, but what did they expect? Like this squatter is just running around as fast as possible, making a ton of noise, locking doors on unlocking doors. If you would have waited another five minutes, they probably would have pulled out a Bluetooth speaker and started playing the wiggles, it sounds like. Goodness gracious, you think you would at least try to hide if you're doing a breaking and entering situation right now? Oh yeah, technically I could go to jail for all this because I'm squatting in somebody's house without their permission, but whatever, throw caution to the wind, let's just go stomping around. I guess it's good for this guy because he was able to figure it out quickly. It's not like it took him another three weeks of secretly living with this person, but I'm sure the the second the door was locked, he was like, look, either my mom is having a really, really big emergency or someone else is in my house. Those were my options. He immediately began knocking on the door. That might seem like an unusual reaction, but Wallman still believed that the intruder was one of his parents. I knock on the door and say, mom, and the first time I didn't get an answer. So I grab my phone and I'm about to dial 911 and that's when I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try one more time. I didn't want to call the cops in case it was my mom. Dude, this guy really wanted it to be his mom. Do you think at this point he was really hoping that she was going to be like, hey, son, what's up? It's okay. I think it's clear to everyone else that this is someone who's not supposed to be in the house. All those weird coincidences from the story so far are all leading to this moment. There is someone else in the home. Just call the cops. Could you imagine if this was the moment where like the second guy came up behind him and like knocked him out with the frying pan like it's entangled or something? Maybe Maybe I've just seen too many movies, but I feel like if you give the people a chance to uh, have a chance to like get one over on you, that's when the movie makes the plot twist happen. Good thing real life is not a movie. Seriously though, could you imagine if the person on the other side of the door would have tried to play along? Oh, hey honey, how are you? They're like, well, you don't sound like my mom. Oh yes, I've got a little bit of a throat cold. Just go back to bed, honey. It's okay. It's just me, the person who's supposed to be in the house here. Like Little Red Riding Hood when the wolf is pretending to be the grandma. That's what the squatter is going to do. Mom? Mom? Yes, son? Jimmy? Is that you, Jimmy? The voice said. Woman doesn't know anyone by that name. I thought, who the hell is Jimmy? 
The woman insisted that Jimmy told her that she could stay at the house, remarking that she'd been there for three days. Realizing that the woman might be mentally unstable, Wallman called the police. Yeah, man, because if you don't know a Jimmy and she just starts talking about how Jimmy made her sign the lease agreement, like, sure, there could be a real dude named Jimmy who's renting out your home to unsuspecting people and just hoping you won't notice or whatever. But it's also very possible that that's her imaginary friend, Jimmy, and Jimmy is also telling her that the walls are made out of, like, eyeballs that are staring at her because the government's following. You just never know. The second somebody is already in your house, breaking and entering, admits to have been there for three days, hiding when you've been home. It's automatically a little bit sus. It's not a conversation I would want to continue either. I'm gonna let the professionals handle this one. I feel like the person on the other side of the door was probably just hoping that was his name, you know? Ah, crap, I've been caught. Let me just think of, uh, what's a common name? Um, James, James, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Boom, there we go. Hey, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, what's up? Just really hoping that that was gonna work and the person was gonna be like, oh, they know my name. They're supposed to be in my house. That would still freak me out. Even if somebody broke into my house and knew my name, I'd still be like, why'd you break into my house? If anything, I'd be more creeped out because why do you know my name? I said, excuse me, one moment, and that's when I dialed 911, he says. It was so awkward, casual home invasion things. He tried to keep the stranger from fleeing his home, and he didn't want to physically restrain her. A journalist by trade, Wallman has covered plenty of stories involving home invasions, and he wanted to de-escalate the situation if possible. I didn't want to grab her. She kind of kept advancing towards me, and I was taking a very defensive position. No, stay where you are, stay where you are. And she'd say something like, can I use the bathroom or can I use the shower? And I'd say, no, you can't use those things. You need to stay here until we can sort this out with the police. And she kind of walked me down the stairs. So this person just got discovered hiding in a house they're not supposed to be in. And their first question is like, oh, anyways, can I use the shower? Like, uh, that's a little bit of an awkward thing to ask when the person just caught you breaking an entering into their home. I don't blame the guy for not wanting to get involved. Like, you don't want to get closer to that person. Who knows what's gonna happen if you get close to the person who just broke into your house? I don't know what you do. Like, yeah, you don't want to get in a fight with someone crazy enough to break into your house. You don't want to restrain anybody. At the same time, you don't want them to just run off and go break into a neighbor's house instead. Can I use your shower? Can I use your shower while just approaching you slowly? You just keep backing up. You're like, no, no, the stench is overwhelming. Who knows the last time they showered? They've been hiding in your attic for three days watching you watch Game of Thrones. That's what their idea of binge watching is. They're like, hey, you want to go break into someone's house and watch them watch TV for a while? I've heard it's pretty entertaining. I don't know why you would think that's entertaining, but that's probably what they were getting up to. Where is Jimmy coming in? That's my question. Why Jimmy? I would really love to know why she went with Jimmy. I think my theory is spot on. I think she was just hoping that his name was going to be Jimmy too. Once outside, the woman asked if she could sit on the porch and Wallman gave his permission, then kept talking with the police dispatch. Patcher. That's when I kind of let my guard down a little bit. Her back was to me and she sits down on the porch and I look the other way. Then in a flash, she was just gone. She must have bolted because I'm pretty quick and I ran around the entire house and I didn't even see a hint of where she might have gone. She disappeared into thin air. All right, the way I see it, that leaves three options. One, it was a ghost all along. How do you know for sure that this woman actually existed? Yeah, that's right, Davis. I'm telling ya. You might have been up a little bit too late watching Game of Thrones, started coming up with ideas of your own. Maybe you were hallucinating a little bit, but it could just be a ghost because they vanished into thin air. That's option number one. Option number two, they have a way to get back into your house really quickly. And when you turned around, they just ran around and got back into the basement somehow. That's the most horrifying option. You know, they were like, oop, oh well, I'll be back here tonight to climb back into the attic. Option number three, they bolted. Probably option number three. I don't know why you would risk it for the biscuit, especially if the police are going to be coming. They're going to be searching the house pretty thoroughly, I'm guessing. At least I hope so. Could you imagine you call the police? You're like, hey, I found someone who was living in my attic secretly. They come and are like, oh, well, uh, yeah, we're not really going to do a search or anything. That seems more like a you problem, but you let us know how that works out for you. Why would you let your guard down at all in this situation? I understand it's definitely not as tense as when you first discover them, but like, come on, man. You took your eye off the person that had just broken into your house and you're surprised they ran away. Did you expect them to stick around? 
around. Aw, oh, man, I really need to learn from my choices. I will sit patiently while the police are en route. Like, of course they were gonna take off. No one's gonna want to go to jail for breaking and entering. When searching the house later, Wallman found a busted window screen and a ladder from the attic was in the yard, and he now believes that a second person, Jimmy, was staying in his house. Man, this guy just had a whole, like, beginning of a cult hanging out in his house without his permission, dude. They were gonna just keep expanding. Could you imagine next time everyone came to use the cabin or whatever? There's just, like, a full group of 15 people that are living there now. No, we've had the house for a while. Yeah, Jimmy's the landlord. What a guy. He's only charging us $700 a bedroom. Ah, what, what a nice man, Jimmy. I love that this guy, like, he made an article about it, so clearly it stuck with him, but his calmness about the entire thing. He's like, yeah, it was pretty weird when the person who broke into my house ran away, so that's unfortunate. There's not that giant dimension of, oh crap, dude, there was a crazy person living in my house. But what's wild is this is not the only story that I've been able to find similar to this. I found another one about a scarier situation where someone found someone living in the attic too. All right, on screen right now is a gift card code. I give one of these away in every video as a way to say thank you to you guys for subscribing and turning on those notifications. So be sure to do that smash that like button and if you're already subscribed with notifications on then you're a legend Let's get back to the video. All right So I'll put a link to this article down in the description as well, but it's uh, entitled Experience a stranger secretly lived in my home. Oh, yep very calming title right off the rip Nothing says relaxing read like uh, the idea of someone secretly living in your home I feel like everyone who watches this video is gonna be on the lookout in their attic any noise they hear they're gonna be like, hey, all right, who's living in my house now? In 1995, when I was 20, I moved to Enumclaw a farming town in the U.S. state of Washington to be close to my brother and his family. I rented an apartment, and my room was on the top floor, but on my first night, lying in bed, I heard footsteps above me. Over the months, I started noticing things going missing. I would buy a six-pack of soda, drink one, come home from work, and find only four left. It was the same with packets of soup and ramen noodles, and I also noticed that doors I left open were closed or vice versa. Mostly, I found it amusing. I assumed my brother, who had a key, was coming over and eating my food. Looking back, I should have known it wasn't him, because there would have been dirty dishes everywhere. I feel like those are things that only become really obvious in retrospect if you ever go through a situation like this. Like, I don't know, if I bought a six-pack of soda, drank one, came home the next day and there were only four left, I would just assume that I must have had two and forgotten about it. Like, I don't think the average person's mind instantly assumes someone else is living in their house. Because I know there's going to be some comments like, Dude, if I ever noticed an extra bagel missing, I would automatically search my house like a Navy SEAL, and if I found anyone, I would single-handedly beat them up with nothing but a rubber band. Like, I know there's always Navy SEALs out in the YouTube comments section, but you guys get what I'm saying. I don't know. If one ramen noodle packet went missing, you'd probably just assume you made it and forgot about it. Or like, I, I don't know, maybe you lost it or you did only buy five, whatever it may be. I don't think most people's first thought would be like, Stranger in the home. Stranger in the home. I feel like that's one of those things your brain doesn't want to think about because it would just freak it out all the time. It also makes you wonder how many hauntings throughout history have just been this. You know, doors just get left open, things going missing. They're like, I'm being haunted. It's a ghost. Nope, it's just someone living in your house doing things while you're asleep. I got a puppy. While she was being toilet trained, I kept her in the bathroom. One day, when I was out, the apartment flooded, and I came home to find the puppy in the sink. She was tiny, and I don't know how she could have gotten up there unless someone put her there to save her. I continued to hear footsteps, and there was a hatch in the ceiling leading to what I assumed was an attic. I asked my landlady if there was any way someone could be up there, and she said, No way, it's probably a squirrel or a rat raccoons and I pushed it out of my mind. There was one story, not this one, where like come to find out the landlady basically had an idea of who it was because she had had to evict the previous tenant and they had said that they weren't going to leave but she like didn't tell the current tenant about it. I don't think that's what was going on here man but I also don't necessarily trust the person that doesn't live in my house to tell me what's going on in my house. If you're hearing footsteps in the attic that sound like a human and you call someone that doesn't live at the house and they're like, no, it's a squirrel. All right, man, well, you're not here listening to this, and I'm telling you, it sounds pretty human-like. It's just interesting how they got into the apartment. You're right. If you're on the top floor, that means that they have to have just gotten access at one point
some point to get into the attic, unless they're going all Spider-Man and scaling the side of the building every night to hop on in, just flying up the side of the wall like some type of parkour demon. Then one day, I called in sick to work. I lay on the couch all day and at 11 p.m. turned off the lights, lit a candle, and ran a bath. As I lay in the water, I noticed the attic hatch was open. Suddenly, everything slowed way down. What took about 30 seconds felt like 5 minutes. All of the puzzle pieces fell into place. The footsteps, the food, the puppy, someone was in my apartment. My first thought was that if they had wanted me dead, I would be dead. They had access to me for 6 months and I assumed it had to be a man, or someone tall enough to get up there without a ladder. What a like powerless feeling, you know? Oh, well I guess if they wanted me dead, I would have been dead, cause I've just been letting them live in my apartment without even knowing that they were up there for the last like eight months i guess that is true though if you if it was a crazy person who was trying to wear your skin like a lampshade then it would have just been done by now how freaky though you think they would have like made sure not to leave that open where were they in that moment if you called out sick to work and then the hatch was open does that mean that they had managed to sneak out earlier did they not realize you were home or something like i don't understand you really got lucky that there was not an awkward interaction there. I also love how the dude's just living in the attic. Like, what a weird situation, dude. You're saving the puppy, you're stealing ramen noodles, sleeping in somebody's attic. Obviously, I don't think you want that to be your situation, but you better be doing everything you can to get out of that situation if that's where you find yourself. You ever find yourself so desperate, you're like, oh, I might hide in someone's attic. Hey, don't do it. Don't do it. That's weird, bro. Like, just don't do it. You're gonna freak somebody out forever. But if you are, then like, do it for a day and then never do it again you don't live 19 months in somebody's attic goodness gracious you don't do it at all but this guy really was like eh why would I ever go get a lease I can just live in this attic for free I knew I had to stay cool and not scare him in case he hurt me so I walked to the bedroom to get my robe passing the mirrored closet I suspected he was hiding in I then went to the kitchen got a hammer out of the drunk drawer for protection and called my sister-in-law I whispered I think there's someone in my house and she said get out now now I'm on my way. Three minutes later, she was outside, and we went back to her house and called the cops. And they didn't find anyone, but there was a nest of stuff in the attic. A sleeping bag, some food, and a book. They never told me what he was reading. The next day, I told my landlady I was moving out and gave her a copy of the police report, which noted, signs of a possible intruder. I think that's a very normal reaction. I wouldn't want to live there anymore either, dude, the landlord. Oh, why are you trying to get out of your lease? I don't know. Maybe because someone has been watching watching me sleep for an extended period of time and I'm just really not trying to be in the house where that all was going down. Especially because the landlady had originally been like, oh, uh, yeah, nothing's going on. There's nothing weird about it. You're pretty crazy for thinking there's something weird about it. Like, why would there be anything weird about it, huh? What are you thinking? You're just a little bit paranoid. Oh, paranoid, am I? Is that why there's a sleeping bag up there where I was trying to sleep before? Literally right above me was a sleeping bag. I do want to know what book he was reading. It is crazy that the cops didn't mention that at all does that mean that it was like weirdly embarrassing or weirdly normal not that it would be normal to find a book in the attic from the person that was living there but like i don't know was it just a, a first grade book about trying to learn your abcs oh the poor man can't read or was it a situation of like how to use human skin to make couches like just something absolutely terrifying and what's scary about these two stories like this one and the one previously is they never find these people dude it's not like the lady that that guy ran into that thought he was Jimmy was ever found and in this situation it's really frightening because they just have no idea who it even could have possibly been the stranger was never caught and the police had no idea what the intruder was doing there as it was a quiet town with no visibly homeless people so in both of these instances the person just kind of like ran away and the cops just shrugged and were like yeah we don't know I mean there's not really much they could do it's not like they have much to go off of especially considering this case in particular happened in like the early 90s there was no security cameras there was no way to verify where they were going I mean there were security cameras but we're talking about potato quality out here now they'll just track your iPhone they can tell you exactly when he was in your attic and what TikTok he was watching at that exact moment but back then it was probably harder to track people down but the fact that they escaped like do you think they just gave this up probably not they probably just went bouncing from attic to attic for a while I feel like once you 
get over sleeping in someone's attic the first time. If you get caught and you get kicked out, you're like, man, I have nowhere to go tonight. Anyways, into the next one. Not that that is a good idea, but clearly if you're already past the point of even realizing that sleeping in someone else's attic without their permission is a bad idea, you're probably not going to think too hard about doing it again. Oh man, that one didn't work out. Oh well, I clearly don't have boundaries anyways with strangers. I just thought the three of these stories were going to be pretty entertaining. The one that was sent into me was pretty cool and these two it's a little bit of a different style but let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of it do you like it this video is a little bit longer too so if you wouldn't mind pressing the like button i would really appreciate it and if you don't know what to comment just go ahead and comment the word home down below if you don't want someone to be living in your attic beyond that i do post these on spotify you can find a link to that down below feel free to check it out i'll also uh put the link to the articles and a link to the intro song down below so if you ever want to go give that a listen or anything, feel free to go for it. And uh, yeah, on that note, guys, I think that'll really do it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't get anyone pregnant if you do make sure they're hot. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.